Coming up on First at Four, hundreds of jobs are open at one Eastern Kentucky hospital. And President Biden speaks with foreign leaders in Egypt about climate change. <clears throat> Plus a good soaking rain out there now, but it looks to be quickly replaced with some cold air. The latest on the way is First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. Hundreds of jobs are available here in the region as one of the area's largest job providers looks to add more people to its team. Pikeville Medical Center is looking for people to fill positions all across the board from customer service to patient service to food service and everything in between with hundreds of openings. The hospital is planning two job fairs to help meet more people hoping to provide employment opportunities and more to those searching. That's what everybody kept telling me, benefits, benefits, benefits. And I looked around, and this was like the best one that I could find. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I like working here is the benefits is really great. The first job fair will take place tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the new construction building next to the former Pauley building in Pikeville. Continuing to watch some rather soggy conditions work through the region as what was once Hurricane Nicole moves on through. 60s, really kind of averaging out to about 60 from our three stations here in London Hazard and in Pikeville. The rain, the fog continues in Pikeville. It's starting to let up here in Hazard here within the next hour or so. London, we're starting to dry out as we look at London Corbin Airport. Again, we're all right around 60 at the moment, but Look off to the north and west. In fact, I'll pan the map over. We don't have numbers up here, but that's cold air on the way in as our rain starts to move out. You see that back edge working through places like Manchester, Middlesbrough, Pineville right now, into Harlan, into Hyden, into Hazard here very shortly. Same thing up into Jackson and even up toward West Liberty and Moorhead. So the dry weather is on the way and the heaviest of the rain now pushing out of downtown Pineville. Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week tonight. Showers will be moving out. In fact, it's dry. At least it's getting dry in Corbin right now. But as we head through the entire region, we may still see some effects from that uh, a little bit later on, especially in the Big Sandy. We're falling from the 60s into the 50s as we head through tonight. But we're not done with the showers just yet. The details on when we could see a couple more rounds, that's in a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. In Ukraine, Russia says a military withdrawal from the important southern city of Kherson is complete. An advisor to Ukraine's president says the troops left behind a, quote, city of death. Ukraine's forces are wary of potential ambushes as they liberate the region, but they continue to keep pressure on the retreating Russians. CBS's Chris Livesay has the latest. Russian forces flee the west bank of the Dnieper River, once their stronghold, now among the 41 settlements Ukraine has recaptured in the occupied Kherson region. These soldiers, just a few miles from enemy lines, are using drones to hone in on Russian positions. Here is the Russians. Here is he going to the trench. They're now marked men. Oh, you can see the Russians over here. I think coming. But the Russians can also see the Ukrainians. Further back, the artillery takes aim. <laughs> Drone images capture the moment of impact. And just as quickly as they came, these fighters, now exposed, must flee the scene. But not the region. After nearly nine months of occupation and atrocities beyond the southern front, it's the Russians who are finally doing that. Russian forces now leave behind a deadly trail of landmines and booby traps. Ukrainian civilians have been killed when they found landmines hidden in their refrigerators or underneath their beds. So Ukrainian forces are now proceeding with extreme caution. Chris Livesay, CBS News, Uman, Ukraine. The Kremlin says that the withdrawal of Russian forces from Kyrgyzstan would not change the status of the region, which Moscow has proclaimed as part of Russia. On Wednesday, Russia's defense ministry said that Russian forces would withdraw to the left side of the Dnipro River. 
A spokesman for the Kremlin says the decision had been taken by the defense ministry and he had nothing to add. Former President George W. Bush is drumming up support among Republicans for Ukraine. Bush will be holding a public conversation with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky at his presidential center in Dallas next week. Zelensky will be participating remotely from Ukraine, but the event itself will be open to the public. Bush's support comes as Republican House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy has hinted the new Congress may be taking a closer look at funding for Ukraine. McCarthy hopes to become Speaker of the House next year if Republicans take control of the chamber. The Biden administration has poured more than $18 billion into the war so far to counter the Russian invasion. President Biden is in Egypt today to speak with foreign leaders about climate change. It is the president's first stop on an around-the-world trip that includes a meeting with Southeast Asian leaders in Cambodia and a group of 20 summit meeting in Bali, Indonesia. CBS's Natalie Brand has the latest from Washington. President Biden told those gathered in Egypt for UN climate talks that the U.S. plans to lead the way globally in the battle to cut greenhouse emissions. Thanks to the actions we've taken, I can stand here as President of the United States of America and say with confidence, the United States of America will meet our emissions targets by 2030. This is the president's first international climate summit since the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, which includes the largest single federal investment to fight climate change. These critical steps are already locking in vital investments in our infrastructure, delivering lower costs for clean energy. The Inflation Reduction Act passed over the summer directs nearly $400 billion to climate and energy provisions aimed at reducing emissions by around 40 percent by 2030. But overseas, the president is expected to face questions about how the U.S. plans to help developing countries pay for damages caused by wealthier countries' pollution and fund the transition away from fossil fuels. We are on a highway to climate hell. On Monday, the United Nations Secretary General issued a stark warning, saying the world was losing its battle against climate change. And our planet is fast approaching tipping points that will make climate chaos irreversible. Earlier, President Biden held a bilateral meeting with Egypt's president to discuss the two nations' strategic partnership, the Israel-Palestinian conflict, and regional security issues. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. A study estimates the world has nine years to prevent catastrophic global warming. The Global Carbon Budget 2022 found that that is how long it will likely take nations to run through their remaining carbon budget if they do not take action to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The goal of the Paris Agreement is to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Researchers found to have a chance of achieving that, the world cannot release more than 380 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent during the coming decades. That's equal to about nine years of current emission levels. Coming up as First Before continues, some good news for those that are in the market for a brand new car. Plus, I want to apologize in advance for the football forecast because it's not looking great as we head through the evening. So it is drying out the details ahead. W